Howdy, Internet. Strange times we're living in, aren't we? Despite everything that's happened, some of us still aren't wearing masks. It's vexing, it's debilitating, it's shameful. But let me tell you something. This is no reason to despair. Because I've come here with a mission, to sincerely and actually dispel just what it is that would cause a person to become someone loath of masks in the first place. You can feel it, can't you, and time asker. You've still got a voice inside of you, saying, if anyone can actually make me want to wear a mask, then let them try their hardest. I am here to make that thing happen. I am here to save you from your own indignity. I am also here to change the people you think lack dignity as well. I'm here to turn the internet upside down, all for the sake of my dream. I am here to change the entire world. Please listen to what I have to say. Three reasons, only three, that you still despise wearing face masks during COVID-19. Three reasons, only three, that you still choose not to fight the coronavirus. Just three small reasons why you still feel beautiful to defy others' requests to simply wear a mask. Listen to me, carefully, those who are pro-mask as well. This is for you as much as it is for them. I adore the internet. We are so close to evolving to the point where humans really are close together and understand each other. We are reaching the point at which we can be as boldly good to ourselves as we claim to be. The world is about to change, because it has been craving that, ever since culture and civilization came into being. Storytelling has reached its limit. Satire is an aging tactic. Ambition has a creepy gentleness. Culture is our adolescence. The only thing left will be the dream of kindness. I will tame the human dream of unnecessary goodness. Listen to me, the three reasons people don't like wearing masks. I summon the dignity in the wind. I will strike you with it. Hear me, friend. Reason number one The first reason one would not wear masks despite the coronavirus involves a small scenario of universe-shattering anger. Let me explain, through an open box of cereal with a closed bag. Imagine that you are living with someone else. Imagine that you take your cereal bowl with you to the table when you eat breakfast, so you can customize how much food you eat, so you can go for seconds, but you have a bad habit of leaving the bag of cereal open. And the person you live with is very irritated at how you do this. Even though the food is unlikely to get stale, it represents your unwillingness to care about the condition of the food. But let's say you mend this flaw in kitchen behavior and the bag remains closed when you eat, but the box remains open. You've taken care of the problem, you've shown a desire to be a good citizen of the dining table, but you still present the same wish for convenience by leaving cereal in a very easy to access state. You present a possibility, no matter your promises, of the bag being open, so very irritatingly open. Your roommate or whoever it is tells themselves not to be frustrated anymore to not resent your habit despite being mainly changed. But every time that happens, it makes them feel oh so very weak. It makes them feel like they could be enabling any other uncouth kitchen habits you might be desiring. So they tend to close the box of cereal, even when the bag's not open. They react to you presenting a lust for the possibility of not following the rules. You might not even have such malice. You might not even be indicating any laziness. Through leaving that box of cereal open, a person feels offended that they have to tame their urge to deal with what might only be a small chance at something which represents some kind of unhelpful trait. And as such, they might do something as bizarre as strangling the box of cereal into an odd shape. In the evening when you're not around, to make it hard to impossible to let the bag remain traditionally open. In that moment, that person will feel somewhat creepy and childish. But they'll get the adrenaline. They'll smile like nobody's fucking business. The reason you don't wear a mask despite being told just wear a mask is because of the overwhelming lightness and comforting heaviness of anything which may actually happen or exist. Nobody says just wear a mask. They are really saying plunge yourself into the depths of some kind of weird kindness by wearing a mask. And it's that dishonesty about the smallness and bigness of anything which irritates you profoundly. Other people want you to do things which might somehow lead you on to what they consider kindness and justice to be. They crave for you to be at an interesting place between strength and weakness. They want to feel your emotions undulate. 
They want you to feel your connection and lack of connection to everything in this world. They want you to feel the energy that comes from knowing that reality only moves forward one gigantic frame at a time. Pro-maskers may indeed wish for you to enjoy the bizarre humbleness of wearing them. So that you can join them on what they consider the right side of history to be. But here's the thing about what you're doing. Even in some world where you really do stand for what this country needs the most, you're doing something inherently destructive to your own interests. Due to how much raw destruction is bound to take place, you've reached a level of passion where nearly anything you do feels as though it must be turned against those you see as unhelpful toward your homeland. You can see people's desperation to believe in not giving a single drop of validation for anything you do, and so, the only comfort is to try and bring them down, especially at points which they claim to not be wishing for your destruction so sincerely. You have reached a level where your eyes will shine with golden anger at the opportunity to make someone regret that they ever spent one minute objecting to what you consider kindness and justice to be. You'll go after them for things that aren't even wrong with them. You'll make something partisan that may literally not even come from that much of a partisan place, just to stifle that friction that humans experience between I just want to do the right thing and I want to support my own version of being a fucking badass. Can you feel it? That bewildering golden energy. You don't know if you're stopping someone you oppose, or if you're trying cosmically push against the essence of their moralistic dreams. And they call you trash and foolish and garbage. And absolutely lacking in value as a person in a certain point in time and space, and the only option is to get angrier and angrier. At anyone who even exudes the possibility of defying you, taking solace in how you're going beyond ordinary levels of bringing down the people you resent. But this is not the kind of dignity you really wish for, is it? The truth is that you know you're being not traditionally civilized. But others grasp for that same vibe in everything they do. That energy of making fun and exciting exceptions to ordinary kindness, and somebody has to stand up to them, so you would say. You, Andy Masker, have helped contribute to so much destruction and disgrace, because you've reached a point where you feel you must stop someone no matter the cost. You defy and stir around your inner notions of the cost of things and the purpose of things. Until only burning desire for common decency remains what feels like the goal. You feel so very pure and just. But no matter what the reason, you're not being even dignified as you think you are. You're still on fire, you're still causing pain. You're just being kind of a horrible roommate on a really really big level. You're not really crusading against anyone in a way that leads to winning. And you might be thinking, what about radical social justice warriors? How do we keep them from causing chaos and indecency? Don't worry. They're not nearly as troublesome as you. The decency they might be lacking is not of anti-medical safety. All you have is the will to be defying something and fulfill something. That's what they've got as well. Everyone's always just trying to find the right balance of rebellion and tradition. That's why counterculture never wins as hard as they say they would if everybody was like them. Combining rebellion and tradition always leads to some awkward bullshit. But that's all we ever really can do. But I've got a solution. I've got the right way to water down all of that stuff so we can filter out the bad shit we do to each other as a fucking species. The future will be liberalism with a smaller ego. I am a philosopher who aspires to fulfill the dream of just be nice to each other for fuck's sake. I'm not really that political. All I care about is people looking at me the right way, no matter how they are. All I want is for us as a species to be able to fuck around with each other in a way that doesn't fuck up each other. This is why I started taking more care to leave that box of cereal closed as well as the bag. I was the one leaving that box open, and I don't do it much anymore. I got over the anger inside what it might possibly represent inside the person I live with who did that. I got over how it might stem from the frustration of that person not being able to control my behavior. I got over how that person feels some cosmic selfless anger when trying to stifle the essence of the things I do, that might not even represent any of my flaws.
it required a lot of energy to not get pissed off at the idea of someone else getting pissed off at the idea of me not caring too hard about what I do when I enter the kitchen. Listen to me, you who hates the mask, chances are I disagree with you on mostly everything about where this country needs to go. But I'm not asking you to change that way. I'm not telling you to just wear a mask I'm telling you to get over that rage that makes you want to stop people from doing things they might not even be doing. I might not even be spreading the virus, why try to control me? Is what you've been feeling. But you've been trying to counter that in a way that's really pretty damn heinous, no matter how you freaking look at it. I live with someone who makes the TV really loud, and I can hear it from the kitchen. Even getting something from the kitchen is hard, because they can't hear over the crumpling of bags of crackers. And up until recently, this made me so goddamn livid every time I tried to eat when they were watching TV. But I recently got over that interpersonal rage. Because I knew that my anger was all about the friction between what something does and what something represents. Do I get upset because of the possibility that they might shout at me if they can't hear the TV, no matter how carefully I move? Or do I get upset because they disrespect my ability to try and prevent them from doing that? They're mad because they can't hear the TV. But they're also mad at me, for having to eat at that time. For living off their money. I can hear it in their voice. And they say they love me anyway. And I know that in many ways, that isn't true. People will tell you they're trying to help you. Or that they'll just try to serve their own interests. But they're always gonna be digging at you. They're always gonna get some joy out of stopping the things you want to do, even as simple as getting food out of the cabinet. They'll try to shake off their grudge against you, for being self-interested, for having moral ideals, and return to that grudge with renewed disgust. But that doesn't mean they're not willing to work with you, to really ally with you. Do you get it now, my friend? You're an anti-masker because people tell you not to get upset, when someone tries to tell you how to be, or when someone seems to be enabling the possibility of making you feel undignified. And despite the way this country has gotten really sloppy and obsessive when it comes to trying to enforce social justice, they're always gonna be trying to insult you, just a little, when wearing a mask, no matter who they are. If you're telling someone not to wear a mask, there's always some rage directed toward the stuff you do that makes you feel like you matter. But it doesn't come from quite the hateful place that you think it does. It comes from the wish we share, to treat each other well despite the crap we do to assert our strength in social setting. People are always gonna be a little pushy and bitchy to each other. That's just how it is. That doesn't mean the solution is to set you and them on fire. Getting mad at someone always involves a little condemnation of who they are. You don't have to try and defy the essence of that by keeping your face open during a pandemic. You see it now, don't you my friend? This world, this country, this creature we are. will become more dignified. When we figure out the right way to deal with our frustrations over navigating social fuckery. I believe that we can fulfill the dream of really being nice to each other. If we just step the fuck back and notice what causes us to catch fire. Back to the story of the kitchen. I was able to keep the physical pain of that loud TV while I was getting crackers in the kitchen from the loud TV, and the emotional stress of knowing I could be called out on it, from setting each other on fire. I thought I was at the end of my rope, but I gave myself some slack and then some. I could feel that wish for feeling free and unrestricted in my action and for being self-reliant in general, from making me feel ready to scream at these people who give me money and shelter I need to live, as the friction between one moment and every moment caused me to burn with so much passion. I was able to commit more to just bringing the damn bag of chips into my room, even if it was frustrating, since I couldn't just carry all the Tupperware from the available food straight into my room. But sometimes I even bring that stuff into my room and awkwardly open the food there, without genuinely feeling my rage get stronger. I figured out how to cause the least trouble for myself as well as them. I was able to just get over how much I hated not feeling free. Not enough to be glad that I like actually being stuck with these people, but enough to make the situation more dignified for everyone in this home.
the reason nobody's helped you until now may have little to do with politics in any way. It could really just come down to us, as a collective, as the same human trying to be dignified, just not figuring out how to be. I plan on decimating popular culture and rebuilding it, making the world immune to culture shock, and even humiliating psychology itself, at how poorly it's done a job at describing the types of passion that bring a human to do things they see as bizarrely dignified. I plan of fulfilling what it is you see in fiction so often presented, that plasma-like dignity which seems to defy itself but is so much more. That thing you have especially, Andy Masker. Let's be straight, here. Being anti-mask is something you see as a beautiful exception to traditional and obvious human decency. But you don't have to do something as drastic as not wearing a mask during a pandemic to feel like your style of walking through the world, of doing the most good with your little life, is valid. You can still hold your head up high while covering your face. You can still be you. You can still fight for what you see as your own version of being a good person. You might have heard 10 million people in the internet tell you you're nothing but a piece of shit for wanting to keep that mask far away from your face. I'm here to tell you that they're wrong. They're a bunch of chumps for relying on those kinds of insults to try and change you. But you're not in the right, either. No, you're the patient who needs curing the most. Being told to wear a mask is as bad as seeing someone close your cereal box when the bag was closed. It makes you want to bang your head against the wall. But you can overcome that. You can work through that. Trust me, I've got my own cosmic rage at the people I'm stuck with, probably the kind that could make you cry if I told you at how they've hindered my own growth. But I was able to tune away some of that rage for the sake of my own dignity. I was able to make my life in the kitchen a lot more peaceful. I was so damn livid at being treated like my actions represented some kind of malice that I didn't have, I kept myself from making the move that would make my life a lot easier. I was so disgusted at the notion of giving people satisfaction against me. That I treated these people I live with as being nastier than they were. I might have even gained a little of their respect. I tried harder with my fucking kitchen habits. And I'm not really that ecstatic that I did, but I'm proud of it. Don't you think maybe one of the challenges in life should be, trying to feel worthy of respect, even someone that is trying to crush you? You've got to try and live with people you don't love, to make the world more loving. You tried to take the bolder way out, instead of muddling through society. Instead of trying to temper yourself, you let yourself act badass. Instead of trying to find a way to not let other people defile you. You said, I'll show them who's not dignified. But this brings me to the second reason why you hate wearing masks so much.